So, plan B. Not exactly quiet either, but... Yeah, I gotta get the right screws for this drive because I do not have the right screws. But I kind of got it bolted in there a little bit. So, yes. Scuzzy it is, I guess. Not exactly um, what I had on mine, but... Oh well, what do you do? It's the closest thing I'm going to get to the real thing, at least unless I run into another hard drive, which is going to have the same problem as the other three did, because that seems to be what's happening with these. But we'll see. There's the SCSI BIOS. Let's see if it sees the drive. It does. All four gigabytes worth. Hey, it's running. I forgot it still has DOS installed on this thing. Alright, so I am formatting the hard drive right now. Um, so, we're about to do something very painful and very cursed. I spent so much time thinking that I could that I never stopped to think that I should. But you know what? This computer has been painful enough as it is. Why not experience some more pain? This will most likely be the world's slowest Windows 95 machine ever on a 286. But the only reason why we can pull that off is because it has that SLC upgrade in it. So, will it work or will it not? Nobody knows. But I'm formatting a 4 gigabyte drive as a FAT32. Now, the reason why I'm even doing this is because I decided to change tactics here. I backed up the existing hard drive um, because I'm probably going to pull all that SCSI stuff out. I'm going to put an XT to IDE in here and just use a regular IDE hard drive. At least that's kind of what I want to do. Um, I think. I don't even know yet. But before I even do that, I want to do some playing around. I want to see if this thing will run Windows 95. It's going to be painful, but... Why not? Okay, this is taking forever. Well, I've got to start this over again. Because, uh... I don't think Windows 95 supports... Or 95A, which is what I'm installing, supports FAT32 because it kept giving me an error. So, time to try again. Almost, but not quite. I guess it doesn't like four megabytes of RAM. So we got further this time. Um, I downloaded a copy of 95A. Well, it's not even 95A, it's the retail version of 95. I downloaded the retail version of 95 off of WinWorld because it, I guess my 13 disc copy of 95 which is a retail version and not an OEM version because this is an OEM version my retail version must be corrupt um, so I just got the OEM version off of WinWorld and that seems to be working now it's funny um, tangentially WinWorld says there was never a retail version of the release of the first release of 95, it was just an OEM version, and that's all they have downloaded. But, I have the floppy disk version of Windows 95 that came out originally, that is the retail version, it's not OEM. So, that's not exactly true. But unfortunately, it's corrupt. I remember, back in like 2001, 2002, I backed up the disks using GRDUW Disk Utility, but there may have been a bad sector. I, I don't remember. But I have it somewhere. Oh my god, is this thing actually going to run Windows 95? That is so cursed, it's not even funny. Wow, this thing is running Windows 95. 
Oh, dang. It just got done. It's been two hours, three hours it took to do the install. So, uh, yeah, it's not going to be fast. But it's working. Man, it's making music. Hey, we got our boot screen back. Yeah, I always liked this boot screen because it was a full color screen versus the 256 color one they give you post installation. So why couldn't they give you the full grayscale version? Ah well, it's Microsoft. You know, this takes me back to a very fond memory I had. Oh, I want to say this was like 2004? 2003, 2004? I had a 400 megahertz Micron Trek 2 laptop that me and a buddy of mine, Steven, tried to install Windows Longhorn, I think it was the pre-rewrite version too, on that laptop and it took like four hours to start up and it took 24 hours to install. I remember that. This is kind of what this, this, this reminds me of. And I've been waiting on this screen for like 15 minutes now. Here we go. It's starting up finally. The video hardware in this machine is not exactly fast, as you can tell just right there in the video. Yeah, it's kind of slow. But if I had a video card in there that had some form of 2D acceleration, it would probably be a lot faster. Because I'm sure it would use DMA and whatever else. Oh my god, this thing is a seriously running Windows 95. So, um... There shouldn't be any network adapters. There isn't display adapters. Just standard. Oh, it probably doesn't have drivers for anything. But so it definitely is not fast. It sees that 486 chip. Yeah, it's not fast at all. Like just a right click, it takes a minute for that to show up. Which I'm not surprised because, well, I mean, we are running on a 286 motherboard. So, what I need to do now is I actually need to run Check It and see what the clock speed is at. Because I'm wondering if this is running at its base 10 megahertz frequency and it's not clock doubled. Because that would cause a lot of this, what we're seeing here. But, yeah, who knows. But yeah, it's uh, it's literally running Windows 95. I am, yeah, I'm astonished. Oh yeah, it's it's taking a sweet time. Yeah, it's not going to run any more than 16 colors at 640 by 480 because there's no video hardware driver, and there's not going to be because there isn't one. So. <laughs> This thing is seriously running Windows 95. Let's see, how long does it take for the start menu to pop up? Oh, yeah. That's crazy. So, I got into DOS mode, and what I'm doing now is I'm installing Check It. Because I want to see what the clock speed is running at, computational stuff, all of that. I got two different versions. I got... The pro version, but then I got the 3.0 that you see on Adrian's channel and all these other channels. So I'm going to try both versions and see what I get. Um, so we'll, we'll see from that what we got going on here. So here we go. Let's see what it says we have. Because I don't know. Um, oh, 8486SX at 25 megahertz. So even though this says SLC 50, um, it's not running at full the clock speed. So, okay. Why is that? But at least we know what we have. Let's see. I guess we're going to find out. It's doing a benchmark.
God, that flickering is bad. Well, that's what we have. Whatever that means, that's what we got. So we're running an 8486 at 25 megahertz. That's what that's what we're running at. But the motherboard certainly isn't running at that, that's for sure. And there we are with the video analysis. So 13,000 characters per second. Um, yeah, that's not great. <laughs> that's not great at all. Uh, but, hey, it's... I should I should put the 286 chip in there and try running it again. But, nah, I gotta find a 286 chip first. Because that is what came with this machine. So, I think my... ALR still has the 286 chip on the board, but I don't necessarily remember. I might have to steal that, but yeah, there we go. Alright, well this is kind of fun, but um, it's just very slow. It's not usable at all, but that wasn't the point. It was, the point was just having a little bit of fun to see if it was possible to run Windows 95 on this hardware. And it is possible. You can run Windows 95 on the IBM PS2 Model 286 as long as you have that uh, chip in there, of course. So if it has the 286 chip, it's not going to work. But it's the 286 planar board running Windows 95. That's just, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of amazing to me. So anyways, right now it only has the 16 colors. Um, what I do want to do is see if Norton Ghost will run, which I don't think it will, because I don't think it supports the VGA mode that's necessary for it to work. But, um, yeah, uh, so this is running a 486.25, so this is probably an SLC, and not an SX. It's identifying itself as an SX, but that, I guarantee that's an SLC too. So, yeah. With 16 colors, you're not going to do much. Man, this thing's slow. Yeah, it's, um... Yeah, okay. We're done here. That was fun. A little bit of meme fun. But unfortunately, I could not get the original hard drive working. I'm still on the hunt for that. But I did add a, add a SCSI card and just kind of throw something in there. But I think what I wound up doing is pulling all of that back out. This was fun and all. But I want to pull all that back out. And I want to put an IDE to XT in there. And just use a standard hard drive, I think. Or something like that. I don't, I don't know what I want to do with that yet. Wow. I mean, it's fun, but yes. Not a very big hard drive. I wonder if this thing will run hover. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. rendering out that uh, ellipse in real time you don't see that very often because there's no computer slow enough besides this one that can natively run 95 so this is literally about the meme of the slowest hardware you can get to run windows 95 and, and it's the memory bandwidth it's it's the system bus speed which is still only running at 10 megahertz so that's why the CPU 486 at 25 megahertz can actually run Windows 95 fairly well if the bus underlying bus was running at the same speed, but it's not. Oh yeah, well all I had to do was look here, and there it is. 95 950. So this is the retail version of 95. I could I can only imagine what 95B or 95C would do. Probably, probably terrible. Oh, yeah. Mm. 
All right, well, that's enough of that. So I'm working on this XT IDE over here, and I've been at this thing for hours trying to get this thing to work right. So I got to the point to where it's super, super late. So now I'm trying to boot it, but here's what happens. I'll put the activity light in there. It does a little bit of thing and then it does that thing. It never, it never starts up. I've done everything I can think of doing. Um, I even flip flop this cable around. I've, I'm, I'm running out. I'm grasping at straws here. I've tried like 20 different BIOSes. Well, not that many. Like the, this is the original BIOS that's on this drive or on this XT IDE, which is old. I tried the modern one. I tried one because this motherboard does not support the int 19 hook otherwise the floppy disk will bypass the ROM which is not good but um, it'll bypass the ROM otherwise so I did a patch for that and that you didn't help the hard drive issue but you know I, I'm just I don't know I'm kind of at a loss here so I'm gonna start trying different versions of DOS instead of 6.22 and see where that gets me. Um, I might flip, try different hard drives. I, I don't know. I'm kind of, I even tried high speed and compatibility mode and I'm not really getting anywhere. So I, I don't know. I don't know. So I swapped hard drives yet again because I have a few of these IDE drives left over from Max that I've you know parted out over the years but this time I'm also doing a 100 megabyte partition instead of the full 800 megs to see if that makes any difference whatsoever I don't think it's going to but we're gonna try regardless so um, yeah so this is a different drive this one the drive is the bearings are just way way too loud they get quiet the more you use it but they're pretty loud all right, system transferred. We can access the drive. Everything is there. Can you believe that's almost 20 years ago? Or will be? Reboot. See if it does the same thing. All right, here we go. Yep, same problem. Okay, so it appears that, at least with this particular hardware, it's not compatible with these uh, 800 megabyte quantum trailblazers. At least this is what I've gotten so far. Um, I want to work with this one, but yeah, I've got issues with it. So, what I want to do is I'm going to go crazy this one says couple bad sectors quantum Sirocco. Sirocco. I don't know again an Apple Mac drive so we'll um, keep plugging away at this all right so let's give our terrible luck a shot with this uh, drive here we're already off to a good start but hey we'll give it a try anyways see what happens here hopefully not the same thing but I have a feeling ah, ah, ah. see ah. now it's working it just does not like the trail blazer drives they don't work with XT IDE huh learn something new every day well that is just, well, way too massive for what we need going on in here. 1.6 gigabyte is crazy. Plus, it's got bad sectors. Anyways, so why don't we try our luck with this ancient-ass Connor? Because it's kind of period appropriate. So, hmm. Yeah, this one's got platter damage for some reason. Well, that Connor drive is no good either. That's why there's a question mark on it. Because it too has bad sectors. Now, bad sectors on old hard drives, even when they were new, are is not unheard of. 
but you have to question why was it from shipping damage was it from because i got all these hard drives on the internet of course so who knows who knows why it was taken out of the system it originally came from to begin with perhaps it wasn't just for an upgrade it could be for a lot of things so all right well Let's hope it actually boots from that drive, because I don't know if it will. It did boot from that 1.2 gigabyte drive. So let's see how many bad sectors are there. Kind of slow. 12K bad sectors. Yeah, well, we're off to a good start. I don't have any more hard drives. That's it. I have to get some. see what happens see if it'll boot from it because I don't know it does it's actually booting from that hard drive okay so that tells me that the XT IDE is just not compatible with the quantum trailblazer so quantum trailblazer 800 megabyte drives do not work with the XT IDE well, I'm going to have to go play the hard drive show, juggle and see if I can't get something that doesn't have any bad sectors. Alright, well, I'm uh, restoring my backup at the moment. <clears throat> it is currently almost 1 o'clock in the morning. It's, it's way, way too late. I hope this works because I just want to go to bed soon. All right, so I got all of the backup files, all the files originally copied back on to this particular hard drive, which is now started up. So now I am um, uh, getting the uh, checking for bad sectors. All right. No more additional bad sectors on that uh, drive, but I'm calling it quits for the night. I'm going to bed. I'll pick this up in the morning. Alright, so here we are the next morning. Um, I just decided to fire up the computer and... <laughs> yeah, okay, so I guess we're going to delete that file. But I think Windows is loading. Um, maybe? Yeah, there we go. We're good. This was the install that was on the SCSI hard drive that I installed Windows 95 on, which ended up um, dying on me right towards the very end of the last video, or the last segment of the video, so. Yeah. All right, let's, I'm, yeah. let's see if I can get this um, thing set up right here. Let's see, virtual memory. Yeah, we know. I don't know why it did that. That's weird. I guess it didn't like that. I was thinking about it. Maybe. Okay, let's see. We'll just use it. Yeah, this, uh, I've noticed a performance decrease with this particular hard drive. I am curious what their performance is, so why don't we go in DOS and find out. Before I do that, let's restart Windows and see if the virtual memory error goes away. Hopefully that it does, and we can wrap this machine up. Because that's the best I'm going to be able to do right now. I really, really want to get the original hard drive for this thing, but I've already got three that has platter rot. Uh, the likelihood of finding another one that's in good condition is extremely, extremely remote. Because I think it all depends on storage conditions. But for now, i got to work with what I have. So, and this is taking a very long time, so the, um, the XT IDE performance is much slower than that of the SCSI. And I think that's because this is an 8-bit bus card, where the SCSI was a full 16-bit. So I think that 
is the difference there. But again, it's a 286 that's been upgraded to a 486 SLC. So I'm not expecting miracles from this machine anyways. But hey, I didn't get the error anymore. So everything appears to be good there. And well, it's usable. I can use this machine and I can do what I need to do with it. I'm probably going to end up erasing all of that off anyways and using MS-DOS 5, IBM DOS 5, because that's what my machine had back in 96. So uh, also the power SCSI driver needs to go away because I forgot right click doesn't work. I'm going to kill that. I don't need that anymore. Same thing with Power SCSI because we don't need that anymore either because that was the IBM P70 um, that I did recently. Well, a couple years ago actually has that card in it. And this is the drive that I had in that machine. Well, the SCSI drive was. All right. So there's my disk driver, zip drive. I might actually... Um, Let's see. I want to move you out here. Really? I forgot how primitive <laughs> Windows was. Ah! Uh, primitive Windows. Alright, there we go. So, I'm just going to leave... The palm zip driver. Oh, la 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 la. Because I want to make the palm zip work. Anyways, palm zip is the driver for that um, iOmega drive. Now, you could use the original iOmega driver, but palm zip allows it to work all the way down to the 8088 and 8086, which is helpful. Um, but in the case of this machine, it's not necessary, but it's got a smaller footprint, smaller memory footprint, so I might as well just use it as it is. Uh, and there we go. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I'm going to get this machine put back together and then we'll do one final little um, overview of the machine and then we're going to wrap this video up to be continued for later because I need to get the original drive for this machine if it ever happens. But for now, that's the best I can do. And there's our current hard disk performance uh, measurements for this is set up over here now i don't remember what the other one was i can't remember if i got it in the video or not i probably didn't because i was more concerned with video and cpu so it's probably missing but this is what we got with this hard drive and that xt to ide not great it's actually pretty dismal but it's still faster than an xt so it's a win in my book you know check it's kind of cool because you can see your IRQ allocations, what's free and what's reserved. That's actually kind of neat. Here's an interesting observation with Check It. So we have a 46, well, it's an SLC, 25 megahertz. But then we have a protected mode failed. There's a problem with the A20 gate. I don't know what that means, but it won't go into protected mode. Well, I know it can because it runs Windows 95. So that's an interesting one to me. Maybe DOS needs a special driver for this card. It's possible. So I found the utility disk for this upgrade. So um, that should fix my protected mode. I think. We're going to find out anyways. So we're going to get this installed and see what happens. System will now reboot. Not reboot, but re underscore boot. There we go. See if that fixes my check it problem. Will it load the driver? It should. Yep, there it is. Cache is enabled and 2x clock is enabled. Ooh, so nice. I bet that's quick. So I for I always forget which uh Oh, I already noticed a difference. Oh god, yeah. Let's see, CK Pro. Let's see, oh yeah, that's a, that, that's a huge difference. So, I you gotta have the driver. I bet Windows 95 would run a lot faster now. I bet it would.
Yeah, there we go, 50 megahertz. So there we go, I needed the driver. Let's do a full system board test again. Oh dang, yeah, that's much quicker. Yeah, that's that that's why it was running <laughs> it was running at the wrong speed. You gotta have the driver. So yeah, here we go. System board. Oh, it still failed. It's not going into protected mode though. Still. We're running double the speed, but we're not we're still not going into protected mode. Who knows why that is? That could be and there could be a setting in there that has to be done right. There might be a, hold on. I wonder if there's, let's see, IBM, IBM OPG. Let's see, SLC. It's an EXC. Processor cache enabled, clock doubling is enabled, math coprocessor is not present. Um, but it doesn't, yeah, anyway, so, yeah, that's why. However, let's see how Windows performs. See if it's any quicker. Because I already noticed a big speed difference just running Check It with the uh, driver running. Yeah, I kind of notice. Yep, it's running quicker. It's definitely running quicker. You know what? With that driver, I bet Windows 95 would probably run okay compared to what it was running before. But I'd have to reinstall it again, which I can't do because, well, the drive that it was installed on is now dead. Anyways, we'll do that. We'll come back to that another day. Uh... So, yeah, everything's good now. Let's see, IBM upgrade. You know what? I think the card. Let's see. Check EMM, check processor. You know what? I'm going to go to DOS mode real quick. And then we're going to run some of these tools and see what we get. So this is a system performance calculation check and I'm comparing it to a stock 12 megahertz 286 which is what I think this is it's either 10 or 12 megahertz originally I don't remember but yeah you look at the difference it literally blows the doors off of this machine when stock let's rerun the test against the 286 for comparison yeah there's there's already a, an a few orders of magnitude difference compared to what we had before. So that that chip is kind of amazing, actually. Yeah, look at that. It's just it's 3.3 times their performance. It's all it's almost four times on the numerical processing side, and this doesn't even have an FPU in it either. So yeah, that's kind of crazy to think about. Yeah, 50 megahertz. So there we go. That's it. That's all I got for this one. So let's uh, get her put back together and let's wrap this video up. And there we have it. We're good to go. Now that's an aesthetic. So there we go. Anyways, this has been uh, at least a part one for the most part. Uh, a little overview and fix up of this uh, IBM PS2 Model 30 286 that's now a 486 SLC2 so if you have a comment feel free to leave one don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and all that fun stuff and until next time guys thank you for watching